Hello and welcome back. In this session, we're going to import the Sparks tables so that you can understand them. And you can do this for any database. We're just going to bring the Sparks tables in to help you in future sessions dealing with mining Sparks data. So let's get started. All right, we're gonna create a data model diagram. Simply come up here, select. We've already filtered out, we're using extended data model, and so we're just gonna hit OK. And it's created and launched Sparks Tables a diagram within our work area for us to continue. While we're on the diagram in the namespace that we want to use, we're gonna to go to develop, and then we're gonna go on in the data modeling panel or group, select import. We get this dialog box that pops up and we're gonna choose browse and we're gonna use direct native connection, right? But first, in here is import to diagram and package. We don't really want, because there's 99 tables in Sparks. I don't know how large any data source you'll be bringing in, but I'm gonna only bring them into the package. I don't need them rendered in the diagram for me. Now we'll go back to browse, select native connection, hit okay, choose the data source that we want to use, the DBMS, put in our credentials, and we're gonna have to hit test first because okay is disabled. Until you test your connection, it will not be enabled. Now it's enabled, we're gonna hit okay, and we get this dialog box here, we're going to only include objects from schemas from the database owner, the DBO, right? And then you could certainly choose, again, tables that you wanna use, but we're gonna go import. It already knows the source, the package, because we're on it. If you had a bunch of packages and you wanted to go, you'd be able to navigate to where you want to load the tables, but we're going with what we have set here. We're gonna hit import. Here's where we are going to select DBO. It highlights everything for us. You could certainly only pick the tables that you wanted. We're gonna go ahead and hit okay. It's going out now and it's starting to build out the data in Sparks for the data tables it will create for us in this namespace. It is now complete. Unfortunately, it brought in all 99 tables into our diagram, and if you were to see the size of this thing using pan and zoom, uh, it's quite large. So what I'm going to do is just select in here, control A for everything and just hit delete. So now that it's clean. So we have all of our tables that are brought in into this namespace for us, and we can start using them. Now what I typically do is just double click within the diagram itself, go down to elements, and I'm going to hide attributes and operations, and I'll show you why in just a second, and hit OK. I'm gonna bring in some of the most popular tables out of the 99 that you'd be using or be interested in in most of your work in Sparks Enterprise Architect. The first one is the T-Object table. So I'm gonna drag and drop this into this model as a link and there I now have the T objects table. If I was to have attributes and operations on, that table would look something like this. So we're gonna turn on attributes and operations and hit okay. So you can imagine how large some of these views would get if you were to bring in multiple elements and have all the attributes and operations on. So I'm going to double click back in here Go to elements and turn off attributes and operations. And now you understand why I did that. And then I'm going to just delete this because it's faster to get back to the right size. If I had the element in there, I could size by that. I'm gonna scroll back up to the top and bring in some other uh, tables. So the next one that we use quite a bit is T connector. So I'm just gonna drag and drop that one in here. And we're gonna go down here, T diagram. When I wanna search for diagrams, I'm gonna bring that one in there and we'll organize these in a moment. 
Document's kind of interesting, but it's not going to be in this. It's not in the top five, I want to say. We've already brought in T objects. And the next one that's important to me is T objects properties. And this is where your tag values are. So when we're doing queries and we're doing joins between T objects and T object and want to get tag values, T object properties, we'd bring that in. If we also want to mine the uh, connectors, the associations and so on, we bring those in and then T diagrams. So these are the top four. If I continue to go down, the next one is package, T package. So probably the most important because when you're looking at your uh, browser and you're looking at the organization, the first thing is the package. So the next thing is the objects that are underneath it. So let's go to layout, move this to the bottom and do something like this. The next one after that, uh, well, I probably should have done this. The next one is actually diagrams. And then the next one is objects because your objects are in your diagrams and your diagrams and the objects are in your namespaces or your packages. And then the next one, if we were doing it in an order, would be your connectors, the associations between the elements and objects that are shown in the diagram. And then the, the next important one to me is the tag values. And those are shown in the T objects properties table. We'll just move these up here and there we go. Again, I like to have attributes and operations turned off so I don't see them. I can always create a separate diagram. We're gonna use data modeling again. And then we might put something for the title full view, all attributes and operations, whatever you wanna call it. Then we're gonna come back over here. We're gonna select all of these, control C to copy. And then we're gonna come in here and shift insert to bring them in with their attributes and operations. Then what we can do is use layout, send everything to the top, and then send them apart equally. We can use pan and zoom to size our diagram if we wanted to, or uh, zoom in and deal with our understanding of the data attributes that are in these tables when we're doing our queries, our searches, and our reporting. All right, that's gonna conclude this session. It's pretty short and sweet. Uh, thanks for asking. The community came out and said, hey, you said you'd show us how to import the Sparks tables if we asked, and a lot of people asked. So there you go. And until our next episode, happy modeling.